Hi, folks. Welcome to the Mike Lopez TV show. I'm your host, AC Mike. We'll bring you all things Atlantic City, politics, sports, dining, entertainment, and so much more. We're lucky to have some very, very important people on tonight's show. We'll kick things off with my friend and your friend, Dr. Harvey Kesselman, president of Stockton University. Go figure. Followed by Miss New Jersey 2021, Alyssa Ann Sullivan. Closing out tonight's show will be Tropicana Atlantic City Senior Vice President and General Manager, Jacqueline Grace. Stick around. We'll be right back with our first guest. Hey, folks, welcome back to the Mike Lopez Show. I'm your host, AC Mike Lopez. Listen, you hear me say it all the time. I know you're getting tired of it, but every time I come back and say it, it is the truth. We have a very special guest today, and uh, I'm honored to uh, welcome the president of Stockton University, Dr. Harvey Kesselman. Welcome to the show, Harv. Always oh, great to see you, AC Mike. You are the guy. I, I, we're celebrating your second year. Uh, doing this show from here. It's absolutely exciting. Uh, you look fantastic, by the way. Thank you. Uh, it's obvious you lost some weight. You're looking at that fighting, that fighting weight. You look really good, Mike, Mike and, and uh, I'm happy for you. I'm really, really happy for you. Well, well thank you very much, Dr. Kessel. And we appreciate that here at the show and the students that you've uh, loaned us and your staff. Listen, we really, I really appreciate it. And I want to thank you again. Year two, it's been a lot of fun. Not only do I get to do a show here about Atlantic City and uh, Atlantic County and our beautiful state of New Jersey, you know, I get to do it at Stockton University. I get to do it with your students and Mike Z and Jordan and the other. So I truly appreciate it. And we're going to make you proud. Hey, you have already, you've already made me proud. Anytime people are working with our students and Mike Z and the folks, okay, that, nothing makes me happier than to see that. So I, I'm thrilled. I'm really excited that we were able to pull this together a couple of years ago. We had talked about it, we done, yep. and, and, and we brought it to fruition. And that's, that's, that's the name of the game. We, we sure did. So listen, real quick, before we get started, what is that a picture of behind you? Tell us. That is, for those who don't know, our you know, majestic Lake Fred. That's a picture that was actually taken by the provost, two provosts, three provosts ago, uh, Dr. David Carr. And uh, his, his, his hobby is photography. And what a gorgeous picture of Lake Fred. It's a 360-acre lake on our beautiful 1,600-acre campus in Galloway. Of course, most of you also know the Atlantic City campus, but this is the mothership, uh, and it's the place that I've been at for you know a half a century now. It's an unbelievable campus out there. Beautiful. I get to uh, visit it when I go see my family and friends on the west end of the county, uh, Hamilton and whatnot. You got a campus uh, satellite out there also. Yes, we do. You have done a wonderful job. Uh, we spoke a little bit uh, about uh, phase two, the right. last uh, season, uh, Dr. Kessman. And it was, uh, I think it was about the groundbreaking when we at least taped and then right. it may have aired a few months after. But now as we go, uh, phase two is coming out of the ground. So uh, uh, Chris Palladino says, I saw him quoting him one day. It's literally coming out. Tell us where we're at with that. Well, we're right on target. You're going to see you're, you're, you're the footings in. You're going to see a lot more motion. Starting in January, you'll begin to see the steel erect. We're on time, within budget. Uh, you know, we're, we hope to open in the summer of uh, 2023 so that we're in full board for the fall. Uh, and we're excited about it. There's a lot of energy. Uh, around phase two, a lot of excitement. As you can see, more things are happening in the park across the street. Yes. Uh, the trees are going up. And they're looking at the memorial to give it a facelift. So everything's everything's moving in the correct uh, direction. Other businesses are beginning to fill in uh, Albany Avenue. There's this uh, the, the new car wash and things of that yep. nature. Many little boutique restaurants have opened up that are are doing a great a great job. And and it's great to see. You know, very shortly, you're going to have a thousand residential students on that one block. And then hopefully we then can launch phase three, which is, of course, block 21, which is across the street from the knife and fork in our residence hall. That that big, huge city block that's sitting there. Uh, AC Devco with Chris Palladino and Stockton as partners, of course. And that's so true. When you see them cranes in the sky, so to speak, uh, it does uh, excite other investors and whatnot. And then let's face it. 
the price is right still down here oh. and uh, the investors are out there. And listen to, to the folks watching uh, when you watch this show, listen, you want to come down Chelsea, like the president says, I'll be more than happy to be your escort. Come and look for me, find me on social media somewhere and we'll go around and show you and I'll grab the president himself That's and, right. and, and we'll show you what's happening there. So president, with the school year, let, let's touch on this. I mean, we have the, uh, the, the students are back in. Oh, they're back. Yeah, that yep. housing is alive. It's, it's face-to-face, you know. So it, it's not quite 100% normal, but it's very, very close. Our admissions for next fall are huge. We're up, you know, almost 2,000 applications, uh, up 2,000 applications. So it gives you an idea where we're at. Incredible excitement. I think students are thrilled to be back, to have the social interactions that I think we need on a college or university, certainly the traditional students. Uh, we have learned some things as a result of right. pandemic. We can, uh, you know, there are things that we can do online, just like what we're doing right now. Uh, it, it allows people uh, who have tight schedules to be able to still engage with the university. Some of our um, events that we've held that, that we've had students both live and online have drawn huge crowds. So I think there's some things we can gain from it, but Stockton is, is a traditional university. Meaning we, you know, we have a huge, you know, a large number of residential students. Um, the campus is the living room and the home of right. those students. And it's important that that we have a very real experience for them. And, and it's a beautiful experience. And they're here, they're right here in the, in the, with you. I mean, they're in, 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 the, That's in, right. in the library where That's they belong. Part of, That's part of our staff here. So I'd be remiss if I didn't ask the protocol and some of the students and whatnot moving forward into the spring. Do we see any changes with that? Or is that something that comes from state and federal? Well, I, listen, we still have the, the vac, you know, we've, we've had the vaccine mandates right. since May. The question is the mask mandate. And we're right. going to take our cues because we, we, we still have masks. Uh, now, I've, I've had both shots and the booster. Almost our whole population has. And, and I, I would love to be able to, uh, you know, to get rid of the masks uh, if we get the green light from the state, meaning that once I know the K-12 has done it, uh, then, then, then maybe we can do it. I'd like to get a few. We still have some, you know, a few hundred students who have exemptions. Uh, I, I'm hoping they get vaccinated so that we can, we, we can rid ourselves of the masks because, you know, a lot of people are getting tired of those. Uh, and and I am too, quite frankly. So uh, that would make my day if in spring I could announce we don't have masks anymore. I hear you. Let's I keep remember. our fingers crossed. Okay? That's right. Here we go. So I do remember too when we started this, we were talking a little bit. And I think we were on the radio show, the W O N D show that I have, and you were you were mask up, back up, wash up. That wash was our up. thing. Remember that? That was that was. That's uh, right. And then we added vax up. Then vax. we added vax up after <laughs> that. But you're right. You're right. So, I'm happy you remember that. Yeah. yeah we oh were, yeah. We were yeah. Pretty, yeah, our URM people, our marketing people came up with that and half the other schools copied it, but they gave us credit. They did give us credit for it. So. That's great. Hey, listen, man, I'm about as Foghorn Leghorn would say about as sharp as a bowling ball, but I do remember something. So, <laughs> so, so, doctor, you, you know how we always ended here. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things I like to do with my guests, um, we talked a little bit before the show, but I like to end, just give us an AC story. One of your favorite AC stories, not to put you on the spot, whatever it may be, it could be with the college, with the university, or when you were at the oh, university. Oh, when I was a young kid, one of, the, one of my first experiences was I, I, and it was at Boardwalk Hall, it was one of the first pay-per-TV, it might have been the first large pay-per-TV fights, and I watched the Ali Frazier fight, uh, one, the one from Madison Square Garden. It was a packed Boardwalk Hall. It was the first pay-per-view TV. It was the most exciting night of my life up until that time. It was arguably the greatest heavyweight fight ever. Ali got, I mean, Frazier won the fight, but Ali had, was undefeated going into it and, and had come back, as you know, and undefeated. Right. And he gained more credibility when he got up off the canvas in that last right. round uh, and really became truly the champion because he overcame adversity. He got up off the deck. And, and the truth of the matter is that was one of the most exciting moments but obviously, I have thousands of, of, of Stockton moments. But I was a kid then, and I remember right. I remember that fight vividly. I couldn't believe it; it was so electric in there. 
That's a word of all calling. It's funny to say that coming to the show soon will be Ray McCline from the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame. He's doing a great job. But the boxing, it's starting to come back here in the city. Which I mean, is great because yep. you had all Tyson's fights. That's here. Right. I mean, uh, not all of them, but you had a lot of Tyson fights here. And, and some. it was once a great, it, listen, it is a great, it's a great j- music city, jazz and all the kinds of things and nightclubs associated with it. Phenomenal restaurants, the best, re- I, I, you know, I do travel a lot as a president, you get around, it's still the best restaurants. And I'm a, I'm a kid from Philly, which had good restaurants, but Atlantic <laughs> City has the best restaurants. That's right. It, you're, you're absolutely right. And listen, if you ever need a driver to get you around or to, to ask your trip, you got me covered. I'm here, brother. Yeah, oh, I'm my here. My board will be happy to know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm right next door. So listen, folks, uh, Dr. Kesselman, want to thank you once again. Of course, you and I, when we get together, we could go for an hour or so. and We'll do it on the radio show. We appreciate you. Listen, AC Mike, keep doing what you're doing. We love you. Uh, and thank you for taking care of my students. That means a lot to me, my friend. Well, I'll let you in a little secret. They're taking care of me, man. There I'm you go. watching them. I'm as going the, to school. As Ospreys. Go Ospreys. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to school as we do these and produce these shows. Folks, Dr. Harry Kesselman, president of Stockton University. We'll be right back. Stay where you're at. Hey, folks, welcome back to the Mike Lopez Show. I'm your host, AC Mike. Listen, we have a very special guest. You hear me say it all the time, a special guest, special guest. But we have a very, very special guest here tonight, uh, live here in New Jersey. We have Miss New Jersey Educational Foundation. I just like to say Miss New Jersey, Alyssa Ann Sullivan. Alyssa, welcome to the show. Hi, Mike. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Listen, so glad that you're here with us. You're ready to embark on something huge uh, coming up very soon in Connecticut, going up north a little bit, although you should be here in Atlantic City. We're going to bring it back to AC in New Jersey. Listen, before we uh, get into some of that stuff, Alyssa, tell the folks, you know, your start and and where it came from and and your passion for competition, uh, what used to be called pads and and that whole thing, but where you're at because you've been around so long with it as a young lady until your uh, womanhood right now and it's blossoming. Yeah, so it certainly has been a long journey to the Miss New Jersey job, to say the least. But I always say that when I watch that video of me becoming Miss New Jersey in June, It's a chilling moment. I I get chills watching it. It was a beautiful moment to have that dream realized. But it was all those years that the doors were slammed in my face and I was told, no, you are not Miss New Jersey. That really built my character and shaped me as a person. And lately doing a lot of interviews, one of the biggest questions people have asked me is, how did you not quit? How did you not give up? And at my send-off party a couple of weeks ago, I actually gave a speech about how there were so many times that I that I wanted to, but I just couldn't let myself do it because I knew I'd regret it for the rest of my life. And I really grew up in this organization. I saw myself change. I saw myself become a young woman. Um, I was not a pageant child by any means. I had and have a tomboy mom who just put me in dance classes, and then I somehow worked my way up to getting myself into a pageant at the time when I was about 14 or 15 because someone told me about it and I just love to perform. So 10 years later now, the fact that I get to actually go to Miss America and represent our state is just leaving me with such a grateful heart and feeling really at peace because all those years that I had to accept that I may never become Miss New Jersey. And now I get to live out that dream. And and I honestly say it and mean with full sincerity that if I come home as Miss New Jersey and not Miss America, I will not be one bit upset or sad because as you know, we have a wonderful state and it's just a wonderful opportunity and a blessing. And it sure is, Alyssa. Uh, folks may not know, uh, I'm proud to be a, a board member, uh, executive board member of uh, the Miss New Jersey Educational Foundation. And I'm not patting myself on the back for that. The reason I say that is because um, as someone who was really not uh, into uh, pageants and competitions and whatnot, other than going to uh, the parade, show me your shoes back in the day, Being able to be involved the last three years with the Miss New Jersey uh, Foundation. And then a few years was a volunteer of special services with uh, Miss America when it came back to uh, AC in 2013 or 14. What you young ladies do, and especially our girls here in New Jersey, our young ladies, 
the money you raised, what you learned, how I, I didn't know. Like I said, not that I had a um, um, I was profiling or so to speak, but to meet the young ladies and the families was about education. It was about communication and that sort of thing. So I would love for you to touch on that a little bit, because a lot of folks don't know, you know, I may see the name there, education, but that scholarship money and whatnot. Yeah, well, it's funny. I, I've been telling this story recently, but a couple of weeks ago, I was just in the supermarket at ShopRite and I didn't have my hair or makeup done. So at that point, I thought I was just a regular person, unrecognizable. And I had a woman come and tap me on the shoulder and say, are you Miss New Jersey? And I thought, oh gosh. Um, and she was so excited to meet me. And I said, yes, I am. And clearly she had looked me up or saw some things in the press. And she said, oh my gosh, you are so attractive. And, you know, she was so kind and you know, in my heart, I just thought to myself, you know, she means only great things and good intentions by right. saying that. And we proceeded to kind of chat. But, you know, in my mind, I kind of stopped in my tracks and thought to myself, if I don't continue this conversation with this woman, all she will ever right. know is that what it takes to be Miss New Jersey is to be attractive. She'll never know that I graduated summa cum laude from Rowan or that I'm a TV reporter at PHL 17. So a big part of Miss America's mission as we move into the next 100 years and we celebrate that 100 year anniversary this year is educating people because those stereotypes are very real, especially in New Jersey where it all began um, with no malicious or ill intentions. But it's about showing people this is a scholarship organization, the number one scholarship uh, provider for women in the country. So it's really wonderful to see Miss America embracing what we bring to the table and not what we look like. And I'm really excited for America to get to see that in a couple of weeks. And it, it is going to be very exciting. And listen, we have about one minute left and uh, I'm going to give you a two parter here. Uh, tell us what tell us what it's going to be like. Again, you touched on it in the beginning of the interview, uh, being up on that stage, uh, that, especially that Sunday night. And I know you're going to represent. We're going to say our prayers and be uh, if it's God's will, you know what it'll be done. I know your faith is strong that what it's going to feel like. And also tell us an Atlantic City story, please. Oh gosh, this is a big parter. So first <laughs> first and foremost, I have to say, like you said, it's all in his time and never That's right. mind. That's been the greatest lesson that I've learned in my entire journey to come full circle. If it is his will, then it will be done. And, you know, I really feel like all of us women were made for such a time as this. So I'm so excited. You can watch on December 16th. The finals will be on Peacock TV streaming. It's so, so exciting. At 8 p.m. EST, you will be able to watch and then watch it after on the NBC app. And the prelims will be be streamed as well live on Watch Miss America. Um, dot org. So that's very, very exciting. You'll be able to tune in. And Atlantic City story. Oh my gosh. I, I love being in Atlantic City, even though Miss America is not currently there. Getting to compete at Miss New Jersey in itself was like having that Miss America experience. And the year that I was first runner up, actually, I remember you had taken us to a couple outings, Mike. And the one day we went to a burger place on the boardwalk. And after right. I remember we were walking down the boardwalk and we stopped by this restaurant and everybody was just kind of dancing and having a great time and and just enjoying themselves on the boardwalk. And I remember all of us girls just kind of stopped in our tracks from all the hustle and bustle of competing that week. And we just enjoyed ourselves. And I just felt like I, I love Atlantic City, you know, as cliche and corny as it sounds, I do. I, I love it. It's my home. And we're so lucky just to be in Atlantic City, the history that is there. So it's never a bad day when you're in Atlantic City or when you're at the shore in general. So I'm so proud of where I'm from and to hail from here and to grow up here. So thank you again for having me, Mike. Oh, you're so welcome. We couldn't have said it any better. Listen, and it's not corny. Folks, we've been talking with Alyssa Sullivan, Miss New Jersey, soon to be with our prayers. And we know <laughs> she's going to represent Miss America very soon. Alyssa, thank you so much. And again, can't wait to have you back on. Me too. Thanks, Mike. Folks, stay right where you're at. We'll be right back with another guest. Hey, folks, welcome back to the Mike Lopez Show. So glad you're with us. I'm your host, AC Mike Lopez. Listen, we have a very special guest for you today. We always say that, right? Special guest, we do, each and every woman. And uh, man, that comes to our show is uh, a special guest here. And we have a very, very special one. Listen, the VP, GM, senior VP, that is, Miss Jacqueline Grace, Tropicana Atlantic City. Welcome to the show. 
Hello, and thank you for that introduction. I appreciate being called special, so thank you for that. <laughs> there you go. Right now, I got to ask real quick, Jacqueline, Jackie, you know, a very it's, professional. Yeah, it's a great question. Jacqueline is my full name, but zero people on the face of this earth call me Jacqueline. <laughs> Everyone calls me Jackie, so please call me Jackie, Mike. There you go, Jackie. Grace, welcome to the show. Hey, listen, uh, I know that you were here at one time. And when I say here in Atlantic City, Atlantic County, uh, the great resort, the 401. Tell us a little bit about your background before we get into the today. Yeah, sure. So to your point, I started off my career in gaming right here in Atlantic City. Uh, this is my second career. My first career, I actually worked on Wall Street for about 10 years. And then I went off to business school and got my MBA at the University of Virginia Darden School of Business and decided to transition into the gaming industry because I'm just so enamored with it for a ton of reasons that we can talk about. And so I started my career right here in beautiful Atlantic City. I worked for a Caesars Entertainment at the time and started off at Bally's down the street when we owned Bally's uh, in slots, believe it or not. Then I moved into a marketing role at the Showboat Casino when we owned the Showboat then. And then I moved into a regional role um, supporting all four properties at the time. So Harris, Caesars, uh, Bally's, and Showboat. And so after about four years being here in Atlantic City, I stayed with Caesars, but got a promotion and started moving around a little bit. Went down to our property uh, in Baltimore, the Horseshoe Casino there as the head of HR right after they opened, and then bounced around to our sister property right outside of Philadelphia in Chester, Pennsylvania. So the Harris, Philadelphia, back to Baltimore for another three years. And then last year in September, made my way back here to Atlantic City as the general manager here at the Tropicana and could not be more thrilled because it was truly a full circle moment mm. for me. I love Atlantic City. I love the role and position that the properties play in the community here in Atlantic City. And so I was happy to be able to come back to Atlantic City where I started my career. And we're so glad that you're here. Uh, listen, you're a leader. What you do is lead people. People do like to be led. People yeah. like to be um, um, in direction, you know, the proper. And yeah. speak to us a little bit. We're going to talk a little pandemic, but how important that is because, we, you know, we're, as we do this interview we're with, with interns, Stockton University, and they're yeah. watching. And yeah. so touch on that, uh, Jacqueline. You know, I will. So, and I'm going to say kind of two things. So to your point, as far as leadership is concerned, like people want to understand the vision. Right. If you are able to cast the vision, right, and, and cast the vision and make it plain, help people understand what they're doing, why they are doing what they're doing. How is it that this work that I do, how, do it, how does it ladder up to a greater purpose? To me, that's ultimately what leadership is about, getting people to rally behind a common goal and then achieving that goal. And I'm going to take that another step further and say that true leadership, at least in my mind and my approach, is really about serving right? Serving others. And right. how do I ensure, as I indicated, that the team members who do come to work here at the Tropicana, like I am serving them in a way that helps them feel valued and appreciated. And then how am I serving our guests and ensuring that they're having a memorable experience? And then as I indicated right. before, how am I serving the community? So to me, lead when I think about leadership, I really think about how am I serving others? That's, that's so good. And when you say serving others or whatnot, it always comes back to me because I love politics, they call it. And sometimes that's become a bad word, but it's public <laughs> service, right? The, the, the yeah. real phrase, yeah. they're, they're supposed to be public servants, that's but right. we can, we can, we can uh, put that into a lot of different type of jobs. So Jackie, yeah. listen, we're going now, you know, September, 2020, it's uh, the yeah. end of the summer and it's, it's pumping and then boom, all of a sudden, maybe four five, six months down the road, here comes this pandemic and you're put into this position. You got yeah. a great guy in the leadership role. We spoke about him briefly, uh, yeah. Steve Callender. But tell us about that, one because this is like no other, right? And we're still dealing with it. Oh, absolutely. So I joined the property in September of last year, which was only a few months after the properties reopened after the closure, right. as you recall, right? So the summer was a, a decent summer last year, all things considered, right? We were still at the height of the pandemic. Um, but as you indicated, after the summer, so after Labor Day, um, as you and as everyone probably recalls, the pandemic surged again. So I joined in the height of the pandemic, at least what we thought was the height of the pandemic at the time. And there were tons of COVID protocols, and that really was a large part of our job. And then as the fall progressed and we saw cases continue to increase, 
the surge really picked up, right? And the pandemic truly went to its height. So yes, to your point, it was a tough time, yeah. you know, joining a new property and just being a part of this industry then. But here's what I will tell you. You know, I am so proud at the resilience of this team. You know, a large part of our jobs had really been about how do we keep our team members safe and how do we keep our guests safe and how are we providing an environment in which people feel safe? And that, you know, heightened even more once we got into the fall. But I think we did a really great job at doing just that. And, you know, coming out on the other side in May when the some of the COVID restrictions were lifted, you know, is really a testament of all of the hard work and dedication and, again, the resilience of this team. You have a great team at that. I mean, we are so blessed here in Atlantic City, whether it's uh, Tropicana, Atlantic City, Caesars, Hard Rock, Bally's, Borgata, very, very uh, leader uh, in the forefront of this type of thing, whether it's the, the pandemic or whether it's the $400 million in future investment. We don't have a lot of time here left, yeah. uh, Jackie, but what yeah. I would like for you, and it's going to go to you, uh, you take us to some of the investment and then also the 40th anniversary that's happening. Yeah. By the time this thing airs, it'll be sometime maybe mid-December, maybe early okay. January. But as we go in, talk to us about that. I sure will. So Caesars Entertainment has invested $400 million in capital in Atlantic City. That is a big deal, right? Somewhat unprecedented. And between all three properties, Tropicana, Caesars, and Harris, we will spend that $400 million in a relatively short period of time. Harris and Caesars has already enjoyed hotel renovations and they have more hotel renovations going on. Um, Harris has redone their casino floor. Caesars is doing that as well. There are new food and beverage amenities that are coming to both properties. And so again, super thrilled about that. Here at Tropicana, we've enjoyed lots of infrastructure stuff. So it's the mm. stuff that's not as public facing or sexy, if you will, but it really is important. So elevators, escalators, roofs, all of that stuff. So we've invested a lot of money in that. We're also, that's not done. We're spending uh, millions of dollars in getting new gaming equipment. So you're going to see lots of new slot machines on the floor. And then I'm going to tease this a little bit. Uh, we're doing a lot uh, with our food and beverage footprint. So some of the restaurants that we have here on property, um, we'll be able to talk more about this soon, but we're spending some capital to reinvigorate those spaces. And I cannot wait to be able to tell you more about that. So that's that $400 million investment. And then 40th anniversary, Tropicana is celebrating 40 years, which is so fantastic this year. Uh, end of November is our official anniversary date. This weekend, November 19th, we are actually going to have have a private event for VIP guests. We're celebrating our day one team members on Thursday. 54 employees here at the Tropicana are day runners. And that really is a testament of the pride here at the Tropicana, of the culture here, the fact that this truly is a family environment. And so look forward to celebrating with our team members, with our guests, and it's going to be a fantastic time. Jackie, I can't wait. Listen, you've been a neighbor of mine for the past 10 years, Tropicana property. Looking forward to the 40th year and many more after that. We got to get back together because I have a little radio show, too, that we're going to we'll be able to shoot the boo boo maybe for a half hour, an hour, if you want. Right. And uh, we, we can go that route, too, though. But we really thank you, folks. We've been talking to the Tropicana senior vice president, GM. Listen, we love what you do and continue. And whatever we can do here at Stockton University or the AC Mike team, please let us know. Thank you so much. Folks, stay right where you're at. Thank you. Hey, folks, it's our belief here at the Mike Lopez TV show that you, the viewers and guests, bring the show to life. Thanks to each and every one of you for joining us. Special thank you to Stockton University and all our guests. To learn more about AC Mike, follow me on Facebook at Mike Lopez, AC Mike, Live, Work, Play AC, and on Instagram at AC Mike and J. Remember to always live, work, play AC. And I'll see you on the 48th.